Hey everyone, good morning, how are you? Sandy is here, Ruka is here, Dana is here, Jessica, David, how are you guys doing out there? It's, uh, it, we had some pretty heavy rains last night, so I'm looking forward to some uh, sun. Yeah, um, how things where you are, I live out in the boondocks, I guess. I'm way, very far away from New York City, thank God. And I live about 70 miles from Manhattan, and I wouldn't want to be any other place than where I am today. <laughs> it's nice and quiet on my block. The only thing that's going to be happening on my block is uh, the kid across the street, this three-year-old kid, he's a little bit of a terror, so he'll be going up and down on his bike screaming a little bit. Ileana, how are you? Shannon, good morning. I'm glad that uh, you are here with us. Uh, Carol, um, good morning from the U.K., Awesome. So I, I, I don't know what, what's going to... Uh, hey, Paul, how are you, man? So we have um, already on the um, live stream three to four people from the UK and uh, Northern I Ireland as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Organic Paul, how are you, man? Aurora, how are you? Um, if gesture drawing is a method of quickly representing the human body on paper, then what are the different methods to do the same thing? Okay, so hi, Nancy. I I'll explain what we're going to do here this morning. Um, Michelle, love it. Love the Michelle Lacanto is here. Got the best last name. Andre Aurora. Okay. Okay, so from Montreal, beautiful, beautiful. India, beautiful, love it. I, it's pretty cool. Okay, uh, let, let's talk about what I'm going to uh, do here for you guys. Uh, India, wow, beautiful, love it. Um, what I want to do, North Carolina, all right, there we go, thinking about moving to South Carolina, Ottawa. <laughs> uh, we're not going to, we talked about Nancy, the Ottawa Senators. We, I won't do that to you, and let's just hope and pray that they play. Um, Wales, UK, or Aura, Anna, how are you, David? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let me get started. Thank you once again for joining me here today. Um, in today's class, uh, it, it's uh, I don't want today's class to turn into this long drawing where I'm going to be sitting there and trying to make everything perfect. So when I teach portrait drawing in my classroom, um, what we do is this thing called head gestures, okay? And Holland, beautiful. And one of the things uh, that I talk about over and over and over again is we, we do these five-minute head gestures where we primarily just draw the shape of the model's hair and minimal information on the inside. And this really hurts my students because it's so hard for them not to draw the facial features. But one of the most... Um, yeah, no hockey talk. Okay, Sweden is here as well. So we have Sweden, Holland, Germany, good God, every India, North Carolina. We have everybody here today. Um, so just by drawing the shape of the model's hair and a minimal shadow shapes on the inside, what I like to call that is a head gesture, okay? Um, and then, so we go, like, we do a five-minute drawing, and this five-minute drawing uh, is very fast. And, and there's no time for eyes and all that. And the point of doing this sort of exercise is to teach you that in a matter of, like, five to ten minutes, you can do a quick head gesture without drawing the features of the face, and it looks like the model. It, it, it looks like the person. And, and I really, truly feel that this is one of the most important exercises that you can do. Arizona, I wish I was in Arizona. Arizona is one of my favorite place on, places on the planet, Indonesia um, and Argentina. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a song here and uh, Arizona, Indonesia and Ar Argentina, it's all very much rhyming. Okay, what am I working with today? We're working with some different materials. Uh, very simple. What I only use this pencil for gesture drawing. So I know that's pretty small right there. Let me try to zoom in just a touch. So that is called a Derwent drawing pencil, ivory black, 6700. It's made in England. And uh, yes, Eric, thank you for joining. 
and it acts like a china marker. So a china marker is this pencil that you have to peel the paper off and it's either charcoal or it's what they call a grease china marker where it is very much like a soft greasy black crayon and that's what this pencil is it's a soft uh like black crayon style pencil and you can um if i just do a quick little line over here you can go black immediately and it just is like a crayon it's it's so cool okay costa rica is here in the house so uh it's just something that i love to do use this with the gestures and you can also draw extremely lightly so let me not over talk it now that i've already just kind of destroyed my paper um but yeah let let me um, just slide this over a touch and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm working with newsprint today and I didn't want to use the cola raise pencil today because quite frankly, when I do gestures in the classroom, I do not use the cola raise pencil. Um, I, I use this pencil, okay, and this pencil works great. So let me grab a new one. Um, I, I like longer pencils. They're a little bit more balanced. Now, this model that we see here up on the monitor, this one is, is not an easy one to draw. Hey, Robert, how are you? Um, Jermaine is here. She's not easy to draw. I have, I have three views today, and we'll see what's going to happen. And please, if anybody hears a echo... A double voice just let me know immediately because when I switch scenes sometimes we get like a little bit of a double voice um, yeah I mean those are really nice pencils as well I've used those but I, I I've settled on this one and this one is my absolute favorite it's just it they're a little pricey don't get me wrong but it's my absolute favorite so here's a, a, a beautiful pose uh, it's a little bit easier to draw this one a little bit more difficult to draw there's not a lot of light and shade now, on these pieces, what I've chosen um, are difficult photos today to draw, okay? And when we draw from these photos, um, I feel that they're much, much more difficult to draw from these photos than when I have a live model right in front of me. It's weird. Like, when I draw from the live model, it's so much easier to draw. Now, okay, let me stop talking and let me start drawing for you guys. So, um a little, let me try to draw a little bit bigger here today. So what I'm going to do is first, uh, this pencil is just such a beautiful pencil. Uh, let me just kind of map this out. So I'm going to start with the shape of her hair, just like that. Okay, and I'm um, looking. So remember, you want to look a lot. Shape of the hair. Slow down. Okay, so big part of a head gesture of somebody is the shape of their hair. So now I'm going to get this top part as it wraps around her forehead. Now, I just, the key here with this is slowing down. Okay, slowing down is um, very important, even in a short head gesture like this. So I want to, this is my part, uh, so where she kind of would swing her hair over. I call that the part. Okay, then we cruise over, and um, yes, Nancy, absolutely, you better believe that's you, difficult photos, but the, yeah, these, the ones that you pick at least are contrasty, but these are soft, but that's why we start with the hair, okay, so we start with the hair, and the goal is to try to make it look just like this model's, um, yeah, yeah. It'll look just like her if I do it right, and I just focus on shape of the hair first. Okay, so let's not get stuck in one area, and let me not um, be perfect. So we're going to dance down. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to draw the shape of her face, okay, with her jawbone. Okay, very light, very light pressure. You can go super light with this pencil. It's awesome. Okay, we're going to come up to her cheekbone. Okay, bear with me now. And we're going to roll down. And we're going to get a little bit of her neck in over here. And let's get in this shape of her hair. So this would be my first go through. Okay, so there's, I, I, I like to draw in this thing that is called go throughs. First go through. Now I'd be going a whole lot faster than that. Now this is the sharpener that I use just for these pencils. 
Now, I talked about with the Colorase pencil last week, I would never use this type of sharpener. I use the electric sharpener, but I only draw with this pencil truly in the classroom. And I don't have my electric sharpener in the classroom. I use this. And quite frankly, this pencil doesn't even fit into my electric pencil sharpener. It's a little bit thicker. So I'm just sharpening this pencil immediately right into my little um, uh, mug. And so now we start over. Okay. So we start over and we can start to put in some shape. Shape is going to be very beneficial. Uh, to trying to get it to look like her. Now I'm going to try my very best to go a little bit faster. So you can see immediately we start to get some dark. Okay, so remember the point of today's exercise is to teach you that if you slow down and you just try to draw the edge of this person's face where it touches their hair and the shape of their hair, you can make it look like the model before you even start to draw the facial features, okay? Now, Phoenix, I never looked. Uh, this, I, 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 I thought about it twice this week. I'm like, I gotta go on eBay and get another sharpener, and I, I, I never did. It, it was just like one, another one of those crazy weeks, but maybe I'll go this week. So again, I'm just trying to draw the shape of her hair. And I can't tell you how important of an exercise this is. Now, it seems very boring, this exercise, but this truly is, whether you want to do a five-hour portrait or you want to do a 10-minute portrait, uh, this is one of the best exercises that you could practice. And we do this exercise with my students also where I have them draw each other, but not their faces, just their um, shape of their hair. And it's one of the best exercises that they do in terms of practicing for portraits. Okay, so we have one side. And I'm looking. Okay, this maybe could come over. And let's come down this side. Now, a, a very awesome, thank you for drawing with me. I appreciate that. A very important aspect of drawing somebody's portrait face slash face is their jawbone. So I'm clinging on to her jawbone over here, her mandible. And then we see a little bit of the underbelly of her chin. So I'm trying not to press down hard with that. Okay, and now I'm going to come up to get where her neck starts because she's got a tall face uh, in this picture. And we're going to do this uh, S... CM muscle comes down, and now uh, this is a little lower. This is a little bit higher. So bear with me here as I just kind of try to map this out. So I still feel as though we got to get the ear, where which ear is higher than the other. Okay, so let's just draw her ear. And five minutes would be up right now. So we're into this 13 minutes. So uh, I would be drawing a whole lot faster in, in the classroom. I, I wouldn't be taking my time like what I'm doing. And let me try to draw a little bit faster for you guys. Okay, so now with this beautiful pencil, with a few pencil strokes, we have the dark of her hair. Okay, we can come on down and do something like that. Now, I, I always... Always, always, always like to draw with a sharp pencil. So it's getting a little dull, and I'm just going to sharpen it. And let's let's see if we can't push this drawing a little bit more. So we have her ear and uh, her beautiful neck muscle, her beautiful jaw right over there. Comes down. Let's see if we can't adjust now this. Good. We don't want to go too wide with the hair, so I'm pressing down hard. Top of her hair is short. Pressing down hard. And then we come in over here. This hair is slightly up like that, so we can be a little loose with it. Now with this pencil, very super duper easy, easy to shade very quickly. 
And so that's my shape of hair, shape of face. Notice how I'm using a fade away with these lines. I don't want to end the drawing abruptly. Okay, so I, I want to maybe even cruise this in. So this, that is just a very, very, very quick, simple exercise that you all should try to do. And now maybe what I'll do is next steps. Although I kind of want to keep this fresh like this. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll take a quick picture of it with my phone. Good. Awesome. Okay. Now let's, let's do next steps with her portrait. So next steps could be, we're going to come on in here. And again, this is more on the, the head gesture uh, frame of things, not the five hour drawing St. Louis. The name of the pencil is a Dur I'll put it in the, it should be in the description below. If I was smart, I would have done that. Derwent drawing, um, ivory black 6700. Okay. My issue then would be with the correct placement of the features if were to continue. So let's let's address that. Uh, features of the face. Okay. So for me, features of the face will start with, you can start right here with this shadow line. Okay, so that that would be step number one, really easy. Shadow line will dictate the features. So don't press down hard. I, I feel okay today with my touch. Her nose is a, a little bit higher. Um, that little dimple above her upper lip, her upper lip right about here comes down a little bit lower than what I have. Um, yes, much lower than what I have. And then um, underneath her lower lip, Michael, nice for you to join us. Now this shadow underneath her lower lip above her chin, and then we wrap around her chin, just like that. So that would be my line that separates, okay? And if I wanted to, this is classic um, head gesture. Classic head gesture would be to just shade this a lighter value, just like that. And that would help me. This is what I would like to call uh, a ghost-like impression of our model. Just like that, ghost-like impression of the model. And now this is our compartment for the features. So that's classic head gesture, just like that. It's one of the most important things that, and we can feather away, one of the most important things that you can practice is that head gesture, okay? So let me just look at a couple questions. Uh, newsprint paper, China marker, not charcoal, Derwent ivory. Yeah, you could easily, I don't have one. Um, yeah, but you can get, a. it's physically called a China marker. And just make sure it's not charcoal. Although charcoal, if you like charcoal, use it. I just, I like this pencil better. Um, I, I, you know, I have all this expensive computer equipment, uh, cameras and stuff. I'm not going to be using charcoal in my studio. It's just not going to happen. But in the classroom, charcoal would be great. You know, this sticks to the paper really well, this paper, this pencil, and it doesn't really erase out. So for these, qu th I use this pencil for these drawings. I'm not going to keep these drawings. They're just kind of, I keep them, but they're just for really for practice. So the, this newsprint paper is going to turn yellow soon. Um, it's already turning yellow and it's going to slowly but surely disintegrate this paper. And this is just great uh, to practice with. Do you think it's better to start with Loomis method or start with the outer shape? So e everything is, uh, that's a great question, Ren. So how do you start? There's so many, like if there's 10 teachers, there'll be 10 different ways to teach how to start. And my philosophy is this. If I'm doing a life drawing of the model, for me personally, I'm into drawing shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just what I showed you. I'm gonna draw these shapes of the hair, shape of the face, and then within the face, it's gonna be the shape of the shadow. Now, let's say I'm drawing out of my imagination, okay? So let, let me move this to the side. 
And let me do another one for you. Um, and let me answer that question from Ren. Okay, let me just move this right over here. Bear with me. I, I, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, um, I don't think I've ever, I don't know the Riley method 100%. I don't think I've ever drawn the Riley method. Um, I, I, I'm sure I've done a modified version of it. And so for me, it would be, um, if, I'm, if I'm drawing out of my imagination, I would use something a little bit more with tools. So I, I should draw a little bit bigger. Okay, so for me, it would just be uh, front of the face. Yeah, that should be big enough, back of the head. So I, I like to start with just a simple shape like that. So notice I'm not, doing the hair. So this would be different. This would be a head gesture if I'm drawing out of my imagination. Okay, so first, yeah, first I would do something like this, back of the skull, front of the forehead, and I immediately like to come on into the eye socket shape. Immediately uh, start to place that nose, okay? Immediately um, try my very best to get the jawbone in because jawbone is so huge. And um, so that, that's maybe where I would start if I was doing things out of my imagination. So l let's get into a, a couple of uh, measurement things over here. So this would be um, back of the skull right here. So now I can adjust. My, my first lines are, are not perfect. So back of the skull, brow bone, Okay, and then um, maybe into this nose. Um, perhaps that would be my eye area, eye socket. Maybe that would be my brow. And this would be my ear area. So right across from the brow. I, these are my measurements that I like to use in a very loose way, top of the ear right across from the bottom of the nose, bottom of the ear, okay? And then mouth area, my pencil's getting a little dull. We can extend this jaw. So for me, it's eyes roughly in the middle of the head. Now, some people just freak out when I do this. Like They're like, there's no way the eyes are in the middle of the head. There's no way the eyes are in the middle of the head. So this is just like... <laughs> This is just like a really rough thing for kind of starting something out of my imagination. So I, I like to think about the eyes in the middle of the head and then the bottom of the nose from the bottom of the chin to the eyes, the bottom of the nose would be in the middle. Is that perfect? No. Is it a starting point to draw out of your imagination? Yes. And then I would um, say, okay, from the bottom of the nose, to the bottom of the chin, the center of the lips is gonna be in the middle of that. And then bottom of the nose, bottom of the ear, eyes or eyebrows, top of the ear, depending on who you are drawing. Some people have small ears that are low, some people have ginormous ears that are big, and so you can't, you can, but I don't, I, I, I don't like to generalize, everybody's so completely different. Okay, especially when it comes to drawing a portrait. So you can see now that I would have two different approaches for a head gesture. So with drawing out of my imagination, it would be something like this, and then um, uh, very much like a, a lover of anatomy. And so for me, maybe I'd just kind of do a quick like a little freehand of that neck uh, going into seven cervical vertebrae right over here. And so now what you could do is start to add the shape of the model's hair. But this is more of something that if I wanted to keep going with it, I could play. I could make a decision on light. So light's coming from the top. Okay, so everything underneath is going to be in shadow. Okay, and maybe this is going to be cheekbone area. I, I, I don't want to go too crazy with this, but... Uh, let me just show you a little bit more of it. This would be eye socket area. That would be frontal bone. Uh, again, that would be the back of your skull. And this could be, if this is a guy, that could be your Adam's apple. And that's how I'd go about starting a head out of 
one's imagination. So do I do some measurements? Yes. Are they Loomis measurements? I don't know. Like I've never really followed the Loomis head. Okay. So this for me is just going to be back of the skull. That's my horizontal oval. In this particular case, it's tilted. So that makes complete sense for me. And then forehead, the vertical oval, forehead into the jawbone around the front of the face. That's my vertical oval. Okay. So when I do all this, I'll just ruin the drawing. It doesn't matter. And so I, I like to build the head with these two ovals when I'm drawing out of my imagination. Okay, so um, you see the difference in the two. So one has a little bit more uh, anatomy, a little bit more with the measurements from your imagination. This is completely different. This is a different approach to drawing the portrait from life or even from a photo. Now, I would think about these measurements with her ear um, and her nose and all that stuff as I'm drawing. But the thing with this um, model's head, let me resharpen, is that we're looking up at, at her from below and she's, she's lifted her chin a touch. So there's funky perspective going on. So if I'm going to draw this, um, it's the top of her ear is over here and it's going to wrap around the cylinder of her head. So I would try to locate her eyebrows, top of the ear, top of the eyebrows, top of the ear, top of the eyebrows. Now, bottom of the ear, bottom of the nose. It's wrapping around the cylinder of her face. So I can do that. I, I can also, um, let's just kind of ruin the drawing a little bit. I, I can also find the center, the bridge of her nose. Maybe it's it's right there. I, I know that, um, that that will help me a lot with placement. And then I can also now start to say, okay, uh, very light eyebrow, very light shadow shape. And that shadow shape for me is going to go right into her eye because you cannot see the white of her eye, right? Uh, the white of her eye is not white. The, the whitest white on her is the highlight on her nose. So there's no white of her eye. There's some light on her eyelid. So um, I think, David, uh, a couple, my issue then would be correct placement of the features of if where to continue. So for me, by doing these, this is called ghost-like impression of the features of this model's face. I'm just simply doing a ghost-like impression of these subtle, subtle shadow shapes. And in doing so, this will enable me to now start to do a measurement of the features without committing to a really, really dark outline. Okay, so I, I can say, all right, cool. Uh, this is her eye. We have this kind of comes down a little bit. I don't know if I'd put that in a formal portrait, but let's just put it in over here. And I'm going to look at the shadow of her eye socket area. And how far away is that from the edge of her face? Okay, and now this is going to come up and maybe this shadow comes a little bit more to the right and a little bit more shadow over here. Now let's try to get her nose. shadow. Maybe this is the underplane of her nose and it's wrapping around. So I'm not going to commit any more than that right now. Center of the lip. Look at the distance from this little part to here. Um, I should zoom in a little bit more for you guys. One moment. I feel as though I'm a little too far away. And let me, sorry guys, I'm, let me just move this over. Yeah, let's keep it like that. And uh, let's see here. Let me, cool. So shadow of the nose area. I'm not going to commit center line. And then we have a little light. And let's try to place the center of the lips. And I, I do believe those lips need to be lower. So this pencil is not forgiving. So now I got to lower her lower lip. Now I have to lower that. And just by these things are like little targets. Well, where is the corner of her lips? They're a little bit lower, just like that. 
So I, I, it's just the first phase. So this is almost like drawing like a painter. Okay. So I'm very, th these could just be like brush strokes and, um, I'm not committing. I, I've committed with her hair. So yes, over here, I'm a little bit of a lunatic pressing down really hard. So I've established the dark value. Okay. And, um, now the rest of it on the inside uh, is going to be much lighter. So maybe I should do another one for you guys. We're about half an hour in. Does anybody have any questions? Matt, in your drawing, the facial features of the face, you explain things really well. Maybe when it comes to distinguishing edges and contours of features like the nose in, in this position, So in, in this position, I, I kind of want to keep that face like that for the sake of the exercise because I don't, I don't want to turn it into something um, where we're going to take it to the next level because today's class is truly about an exercise. So maybe I can move this over. So her nose um, in this particular view is angled down. I'm just going to kind of try to do this with some line. Angle down. Uh, ball shape here. Okay, then we her nose is tilted. So now we get the tilt of the bottom of her nose where it touches her face. It's, it's way more severely tilted than that. Wow. Yes. And so let me lower that. This and now this goes to the center. Bear with me here while I just set this up. This needs to be moved over. Let's lift it. So for me, her nose is this shadow. And then this is the side plane of her nose. Rolls into the eye socket. Now what we can do is this. It's actually much lower than that. Let me resharpen, guys. Uh, let me just grab a pencil that's already sharp. And nose lobe, nose lobe, that curves in. I, I'm, I'm turning this in more into a, a demo drawing and not a pretty one. So nostril, which I don't like to press down hard with. And then we have cast shadow. Nose needs to be wider, needs to be bigger, but this is the mechanics of it. So this would curve around the cylinder. Are you going to put those types of lines there? No, you're not. But I'm just trying to show you how I'm thinking about it. And that could be wider. You're welcome. You're welcome, Joyce. Okay, so that nose is horrendous, but that's my process. So you just, you want to think about that's your ball. This is the front plane. This is the side plane. That is the other side plane. And this is where it touches the face. Angle down should be like that. Perspective here, angle down should be like that. Okay, so not the prettiest, but that's how I think about it. Boy, is that ugly. Gosh, okay. Um, do you guys want me to do another little face for you with the same process? Did this help? Because I can do another one for you. I, I don't want to go over an hour today, but I, I, I feel as though that I can do another head and there will be more than enough time. What do you guys think? All right. Someone give me a heads up. Did I lose everybody with that ugly nose drawing? <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix. Okay. Um, let's see. Which one should I draw here? Uh, I 
Hey, Craig, what's up, man? Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, now, this one we just drew, maybe we should try... Oh, God, if I ask, I'm going to get a lot of different answers. Okay, cool. So there's this one, and there is this one. I, I feel as though this one has some distortion with the uh, camera. I'm torn with, with which one. Well, instead of being torn, let me just draw. Okay, so let's let's move this over. So again, the exercise, quite frankly, is just simply to um, sketch ahead, mainly focusing on the, the hair versus the face. And if you're lucky enough to have some shadow shapes, you do a ghost-like um, impression of the face. And this ghost-like impression is the container for the facial features. Okay? Okay, cool. Let me move this over here. Awesome. And let me get another sheet of paper. I feel like I'm doing like a little bit of an experiment. Boy, this thing is just, <laughs> you know, sometimes I, 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 I hate um, demo drawings sometimes. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I hate them. Let's move this disgrace off. I want to save this, but I wanted to share with you guys how the difference between life and memory, because there is a, a difference for me. There's no doubt about it. Okay, now let's um, let's sharpen this pencil, and let me um, yes. So for members of DTO, these photos will be available for you to download on the website. Okay, uh, right now I don't have them uh, here on YouTube, but on they'll be on the website when I, I'm trying to catch up with putting these live classes on the website. I added another one uh, the other day from two weeks ago. I have one more to catch up and then this one. Okay, so let's do, let's do this one. Let me make her a little bit bigger on my monitor. Awesome. So shape of hair. So that first line for me is going to dictate um, uh, how she's going to fit on this little rectangular vertical here. So yeah, it's really important to do that first line and make sure she's gonna fit on your paper. So first line, this section of her hair. My sister, my sister always calls on when I'm doing the live stream. <laughs> Liz, I can't talk right now. Um, I'll call you later. All right, so that already is too aggressive of a tilt, but let's not get stuck. So this, shape of hair. This. Now, I like to draw hair the way that it grows. So it's growing this way. It's fallen on her head that way. It kind of gives it a little bit of context, but I'm also trying to draw with angles as I do this. So again, the goal here, everyone, is shape of hair, shape of face. So those are my first lines, okay? And I'm being a little bit more impressionistic, so now this angles down. And it's hair where it touches the face is very soft. So you don't wanna go too hard edge over here on the top, because then it's gonna look like a doll's hair. So sometimes you wanna break the edge of the hair. So it's not a pure outline. So now with this line that I'm doing, I'm glancing at the width of her face as I do this. Now, I, I really should be doing this quicker because the, the slower I go, the more it's going to get screwed up, right? And I've learned that with gesture drawing where I'm like, oh, that's a great pose. I got to draw it perfect. And then I slow down and I'm like, idiot, you should have done the torso peanut shape. You should have done the opposite seas. It would have been faster. So same thing with a portrait like this. Sometimes if you go too slow, especially like in a life drawing situation when you have 10 minutes to draw, just resharpening. Um, if you go too slow, sometimes no good. Now with these pencils, uh, when I sharpen them, sometimes the shavings go on the floor and they get into the floor. Like you gotta use a pretty good, like I've rolled over them with my computer chair 
and they were like embedded into the floor, this, this pencil. And uh, yeah, so just be aware that this pencil is pretty intense in terms of it staining things if you're going to let it get all over. Okay, so shape of hair, shape of face. I'm glancing at the width. Now I should get some shape in because shape is going to help. So the shape is going to be her hair. Very quickly, just squint. She has a little hint of her ear right over there. Her beautiful cheekbone kicks in. Okay, I don't want to bully you, but could you try to represent the hair, this drawing as blonde? I'll do that in the next one. I promise you, I will. That's a great question, and it's not bullying. <laughs> uh, I promise you I will do that, Eric. And then I have a little bit of an unrelated question. Do you have any thoughts on illustrators like Frisetta or Boris Vallejo? Well, I used to look at them all the time when I was younger and starting out as an illustrator, and I always used to buy Boris Vallejo's calendars um, and hang them in my studio when I would paint. And um, one of my really, really good friends in college was Dorian Vallejo, Boris's son, and Dorian taught me a lot about painting and he was very, very gracious with his knowledge. He uh, taught me how to have a photo shoot. I went to Boris's house. I'm, I'm not a name dropper because I don't know anybody. This is like a big deal that I went to Boris's house. <laughs> and it was a really a wonderful experience. And um, Dorian, his son, who's my age at the time, um, showed me how to set up a photo shoot. I still have the painting that I did. It's hanging in my parents' house. Um, the painting from that photo shoot and the girl in the photo shoot was his girlfriend, uh, Liana. And, uh, so I, I'm, I'm a, a lot of people look at Boris's work and they don't like it for their reasons. Maybe it's just too much with, you know, TNA and, uh, and I get that, but I, I, I like his painting and I like, you know, his longevity as, as an artist. So I'm, I'm a big fan for Seta. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, for Zeta, I, I love his, his work as well. Uh, love is a strong word. I used to love it. Now I like it. Yeah, Boris is, is the man. So do you guys see how we got an impression of her a little bit? I think her face needs to be longer. So let's just indicate a target for her chin. Sometimes when I change measurements at this stage in the game, I usually screw it up because I don't go with my gut but let's try. Yeah, I have some really, I, I could go on with the stories about that time that I went to Boris's house and then I went to his other house um, and we went out to dinner, all of us, and I got sick. <laughs> I won't get into that story. I'm going to get distracted and then it's not, it's not going to be educational. Uh, so let me keep being educational here. I'll save that story um, for another time of how I got sick in the bathroom when I went out to dinner with Boris. Uh, very, very funny. Okay, so there's my head gesture. Now, I don't like to draw just um, the head. I like to draw the shoulders, or else you have what looks like to be a decapitated head, and nobody wants that in their drawings. So we can do a little bit of a form line and a beautiful... Everybody's got to become, if you're into drawing portraits and uh, portraits usually come with a neck and shoulders, this muscle here is the most important muscle, more important in my opinion than anything on the face, this um, SCM. I just call it the sternomastoid because it's easy for me to remember that. But I think it's sternocoletal mastoid or something like that. And um, now, you know, I sometimes with art supply stores, when they put this skew on the pencil, it really gums up the um, sharpener, and that drives me crazy. Okay. Just let's push this. She has a very prominent jaw. Ear could be a little higher. 
and let's put the hair. This is mucho important to get the shape of her hair right there because it's going to be the frame. Remember, this is a frame. <laughs> yeah, he took us out to dinner and I, I, I said, could you excuse me for a minute? And I just went to the bathroom and it was just an awful. We went to that day, uh, Boris and Christine was a really good friend at the time. Dorian was dating Christine and um, she's a painter too. And we went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Art to go to the show. And the show was titled Paris 1889. And I, I have the book. It's one of my cherished books in my library of that show. So uh, Pennsylvania Academy of Art uh, kind of replicated a show that took place in eight, 1889. And uh, it was just an incredible day. We went there. Then we went to Boris's house. We started off at Boris's first house. Uh, and I saw there uh, in his foyer, to use a fancy word, a beautiful um, uh, Stephen Assell painting, uh, who was another one of my teachers, and God Almighty, it was just like, for me, it was a day of heaven until the end when I got my classic uh, migraine headache. Um, I probably was completely dehydrated because I didn't drink anything the entire day. So I'm just about done here with this. So that's our head gesture. Okay, so now let's do the shadow shape. So with her, she has form light on her. So you can see the blue light on the side of her face, the side of her nose, that's shadow, and that is form light shadow. Annie O, you should subscribe. I have uh, for years, uh, there are so, okay, cool. Okay, thank you, Annie O. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so the thing with necks is, is uh, just don't think about too much of the, the simple cylinder. Instead, think of the letter V. So this is sternomastoids coming down, and then we're wrapping around over here, and it does go to the center of her collarbones, which would be right here, and her shoulder. Yeah. Now, let's do the shadow shape. So David earlier had, had asked, uh, placing the, the features is the hard part. So for me, I'm not necessarily going to dive into hardcore features. I could, but I don't. if I'm doing a life, this is more predicated on life drawing. If I'm doing a life drawing, I'm doing this ghost-like impression. It's very soft over here because we have two lights hidden this model. One window light, I can tell, cool north light, and then a point light is hidden her. So we do that shadow. And this we can feather away very lightly, light pressure. So that's going to be extremely helpful in trying to draw her likeness. Just since she has, in, in this view, pretty tall forehead. I'm just going very light over here. What's the distance from the edge of her eyelashes to the edge of her face? Her face, uh, her nose. Let's look at the bottom of her nose as a simple ghost-like thing. There's a shadow under her nose. We have to be careful on a female that that does not start to represent what a mustache would represent. Just very lightly here. Suggest the center of her lips just like that. Don't go crazy with the outlines in the early stages. So I'm drawing almost as if I was painting. So I would be doing the same thing with paint, okay? And so this is just a ghost-like impression. So that's going to be the center of her lips and then her chin. So I'm not leaving enough room for her chin. So that's the shadow underneath her lip. I should have gone lighter, but it's all good. Let's just establish her chin right over here with a little bit of a darker line. So if you're going to do a dark line on the chin, you do it there on the chin. Uh, I meant to say on the jaw. You don't do it on the whole jaw. You primarily do it on that part of the chin. Why? Because that part of the chin is the foreground of the, the jaw. It's coming forward, so it's okay to do a nice little edge. So over here, I can do a nice little edge, and then we've just lowered 
that ghost-like impression. She's got pretty skinny neck. And her her left deltoid, uh, I'm sorry, her left, her right trapezius is higher. So I made a little bit of a screw up with that, but let's keep going. It should be up here. And this should be lower. Yep. Okay, now let's refine edges. So I talk about this all the time with all students, all coaching students, all critiques on DTO. The big thing that I talk about is slow down and refine your edges. Uh, don't let your edges just kind of get away from you where they're just so random. You have a hard edge here, a hard edge there. It, it's very important to establish edges. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit darker with this. That ear is in shadow, so we want the ear to go into the mid-ground. Squint. Okay, cool. So that's working for me. Maybe this could be lower. Yeah. Hair is soft. Let me resharpen one more time. So do you see the ghost-like impression of her? Does it resemble her? Okay, it resembles her. Um, and that's the idea. When you are in a classroom situation, I'm doing a lot of talking here today, but what I stress to my students is to draw like this in, in a five-minute gesture pose, okay? Now, um, okay, so, yeah, so last week I said that I never use these uh, pencil sharpeners in my studio with my cola race pencil never ever ever because i use the electric sharpener in my studio but these pencils do not fit into the electric pencil sharpener so and i only use these china marker style joe went drawing ivory black 6700 pencils in the classroom i never draw with this pencil in my studio and so it goes into this really cheap sharpener and for me I, I use these for a little while, and they're so cheap, you just kind of dispose of them once the blade starts to show a little wear. Now, there's this sharpener that is a little bit more expensive by 50 cents maybe, but this pencil doesn't even really fit into that sharpener. And then you put the sticker cue, and it's like, really? So this one has a little bit of a bigger opening. This one has too big of an opening, too small of an opening. This one is just right. <laughs> Okay, let me just make sure I, I'm answering questions here. Uh, okay, cheap, big hole, and it works better than expensive ones. Okay, cool. How do you approach a messy hair? Um, so let, let's... Let's throw in some messy strands, okay? So messy strands for me. So you hear my hand on the paper? Really important you put your hand on the paper. So you have to practice drawing light scribbles. Light scribbles, light scribbles, and now light scribbles. With all, she's got all those strands of hair. Now that should not interfere with the shape of her hair. These are just light scribbles. And that's how I would handle messy hair. And that's what really gives the person their um, character. Okay, it, it's, it's the hair. I, I, I'm a big believer in, in saying that, and it's true. Now, um, I think I want to keep this one fairly ghost-like. So now, if I was going to do my next step, it would be lash. Everybody asked me this, and this is important. So it would be lash, gesture, lash okay so I'm, I'm being very very dainty with this I'm not pressing down hard because I want to keep this and photograph it and put it under the video so lash lash that's how I'd place her eyes okay just with that kind of gesture line like that and uh, I'm not saying what I've done here is correct 
but that's how I would do it. Okay. Does that help? Let's do one more. Okay. Uh, let's do one more. That's my, my head gesture. There's so much more that I could do with that, but the, the point of this exercise here today is just to stop where it's the end of a five minute or 10 minute quick head sketch. And the point of this exercise is not for me to, you know, with my ego, try to make the exact measurements and all of that. It's, it's really about helping you guys to get this first impression of the model in a, in a five to 10 minute period. And I think this is most important in, in, in terms of your practice and, and what you should be doing. Let, let's do one more, okay? Um, yes, I like that one. That one came out cool. Let me get another piece of paper here. Good. Okay. How we doing, everybody? Tape. Let me just put another piece of tape on this piece of paper. There's no echoes. Everything's good with the sound. Okay. Let's switch poses. Let's do this pose. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, what do we see when we look at this pose? We don't see a lot of light and shadow. Okay, there is light coming. Do you see her chest? How her chest is like a light blue? So that light blue is north light, okay? And the north light is filling in where the shadow shapes would be. So you have to think about uh, that the blue skin, the blue tinted gray skin is, is where the shadow would be. And then the orange skin, the, light, the, the warmer skin, I should say, not orange, uh, but I do see orange on her neck, uh, shoulder, no doubt. Uh, would be where the light is hitting. So again, let me let me be very repetitive, and uh, may I'll do the blonde hair thing. So the blonde hair just means we're gonna go light, okay? So it'll it'll save a little time. But it, two things that are really really important. Somebody had asked me, and I I really do uh, apologize for forgetting your name uh, to to draw her as if she had blonde hair. So if I do that, and I'll do that now uh, in the beginning, and then we'll switch her to her dark hair the value of the person's hair also dictates if it's going to look like them. Now, can we make it look like her with just an outline? Sure. Will it be easier to make it look like her if we did the value? Yes. So let, let's start here. So this is my edge. Good. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I like my sketches uh, better than I, I like my finished pieces a lot. If the lighting, if the reference doesn't have good lighting, okay, so some students, and you know who you are, would say that the reference doesn't need to have good lighting. <laughs> here's, here's my caveat. Um, when, here's, here's the most important sentence, and then I'll draw. When you are learning how to draw, let me repeat that. When you are learning how to draw portraits, I feel you Im will improve faster when you work from photographs that have good form light. That means a light, a shadow, and a cast shadow. That happens on a surface plane shift. Top light is good, side light is good. But when you are learning how to draw and you draw from a photo like this that has terrible lighting, you're gonna improve slower because you're not following very simple fundamentals of how to draw a portrait. And when you're drawing a two-dimensional portrait on a, on a flat piece of paper, you're basically drawing shapes. And these shapes make up the likeness. So when there's no shadow, there, it's much more difficult to see the shapes. So I'll, I'll, watch me, and, and we'll see how we do here, okay? Yes, Paul. Paul is a coaching student, and he uh, first started working with very terrible reference that had two light sources, like this has two light sources, uh, and he has gotten so much better at picking better photo reference and he's, Paul, you're improving like so much because of it. Okay. So let's start. Uh, 
big angle, okay? This will be the last one today, I promise, because um, we're at we're at exactly an hour. My butt's been sitting in this chair. Okay, so let me focus here. Get these angles. S curve. All right, so very thin hair. And the angle of where her forehead touches her hair is quite level. Her hair, this, see, I've already screwed up because I'm going too fast. This tilts down, tilts up, tilts down, skinny top of the hair, tilts, angles away. Let's make this wider. Okay. Now, coming down to her ear. Ears are so important in portrait drawing uh, for a measuring landmark type of thing. Okay, so that, that's pretty tall. And now let's just get the bottom of her ear with a target. Let's go to the other side of the forehead. So it angles, angles, gesture. jaw and chin let's do some angles here eye socket nose I'm trying to make sure I didn't make her forehead too long so go lightly here, so if, if the measurements are wrong, which mine kind of look a little wrong right now, but let me give myself a chance to actually do them. Uh, yep. So that's angles. Now let's go back to the hair thing. Strands of hair over here. I'm going to use them as a frame. So I don't want to commit to a dark underneath her chin, but this is a very vital shape. That. And then let's go to the other side. So I got to be very careful I don't give her a linebacker neck. So this sternomastoid comes in, sternocoledomastoid. And let's zoom her, her shoulder. So which shoulder is higher than the other? That's very important in a portrait. Be very S-curvy with this. She's got a very thin neck. Lean back. So I'm using a little bit of continuous line. Let's go back to the ear shape. Now I've got to resharpen. Okay, let's keep going here. So, ear should be higher. Slightly, let's get that ear. Let's get the bottom of the... Let's not commit with the dark just yet. Oh, wow, that comes in like that. Forehead kicking back. So this one's tougher, right? It's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go to these angles. So I'm trying to show you guys as many different things as I possibly can. I moved her nose to the left. Now, let's, um, at this point in the game, I would really want to shade. So let's put in some tone. 
doesn't need to be dark. It's make it the dirty blonde. Draw the hair the way it's laying on the head. I ended up with a lot of faint lines. Should I rub them out? No, sometimes I was like, you see, this is faint lines. Like sometimes you can leave them in and they, and they add really nice texture. So let's just go a little lighter with this before we commit. Now, um, I said earlier that her um, cool skin is going to represent the shadow. So I'd come on in here, light. Light tone. Light tone uh, on the front plane of her nose underplane of her nose into her lip, side plane of the face, indicate the lip, indicate the center of the lip. Underneath the lower lip is a shadow on her chin, and then it wraps around her chin like this and rolls into a very soft shadow underneath her neck. So that's my ghost-like impression and this pencil strokes that would wrap around maybe, or you can have these strokes. I think a better way to do that would be to go vertical with those strokes, okay? Now, uh, I've already kind of screwed up a little bit with her jaw. I committed too much, uh, but if I'm doing blonde hair, it's gonna kind of look like that. So it's gonna be very light with like little dark accents. Let me grab another pencil. Uh, so now let's start over. Okay, so let's put in a little dark. So this would be my second go through. A little dark over here. Just glancing at the edge of her. If she has straight hair, what would you do? If it had curvy hair. Um, I would just draw the hair the way that it's curving. So if it's doing like an S curve, it would be my pencil stroke direction. So her hair is kind of going on an angle. So that's my pencil stroke direction. If she has um, wavy hair, my pencil stroke direction is going to be wavy. So it's a texture is created by pencil stroke direction. So her, her chin is jutting out. So that means this needs to be moved over, which in turn would make her neck nice and skinny. So again, this today's class is a head gesture. It's an impression of the person you are drawing. You can do this with paint. You can do this with charcoal. You can do this with pencil, but it's your first five to ten minutes the most crucial times in any portrait work whether it's a charcoal whether it's a watercolor whether it's a oil painting uh, the first ten minutes to five minutes is when you try to get if you're drawn in more of a tonal way you try to get this gestural feel of the head without diving into the outlines So her hair is just being laid on her shoulder, going on a diagonal like that. Now, we could maybe push a couple of other things here. So a suggestion of her eyebrow. Um, a suggestion of this eyebrow into her eye. So I'm going to do her eye. I went too low there. I'm just trying to place her eye without pressing down hard. So if I'm using a regular pencil, I could erase out. So if I'm doing a long drawing, again, 
the point of this is if you're doing a long drawing, this is a great way to start this ghost-like impression. So I've got her eyes a little too close. So now with that ghost-like impression, I see that this comes down and a little bit of cheekbone over here, side of her nose, ghost-like impression, and her lip comes down like that. Okay, so that would be my ghost-like impression. Now, let's do an experiment. Do I have an eraser out? Let's see if this pencil erases. But quite frankly, you know, if I'm doing this in a life class, this drawing is done. Okay, it, it, it's just completely done, and I'm not going to fuss with it. And I really shouldn't be using this eraser at all, but I'm just doing like an experiment on camera. Nope, it ain't going to happen. So just understand that if you're going to use this pencil, it's not really going to erase at all. So that that's my, my ghost-like impression of her. Is it great? No. Did I capture her? I'm not quite sure. I don't think that I did. I don't think that I did. So if I want to just be a little bit more aggressive, um, I can press down harder over there. Press down a little bit harder. Her lips are angled in perspective like that. Angle up. So just hinting at some features very quickly here. Where is her nostril in relationship to her lips? I could indicate some lashes. This eyebrow is lower than the other one. And then, yep. Connect this. front plane, okay, and surface plane right over here. So again, ghost-like impression. So now if this was going to be a long drawing, then the rest of my time is going to be tweaking and measuring and tweaking. This is just a cylinder. Thank you, Aurora. So I guess we're just about done here today. Does anybody have any questions uh, from today's class? Because we're at an hour and 15 minutes, and usually people have, don't have much time after that. But I, I can answer. It. First, let me just say this. If you've joined me today, thank you for joining me. I really do uh, appreciate that. You know, you can be doing so many other things with your time. So the fact that you visited with me is awesome. Thank you. Uh, for members of DTO, I would love to see your version of, of these. Uh, uh, maybe you can draw them out and you can post them to, to the Critique Gallery for the Monday Critique. And um, yeah, so any questions? I think this one's my favorite one of the day. Yep, that one I like the most. I feel as though that I captured her head gesture. Uh, I didn't talk about all of the different things with drawing heads, like measurements and tilts and all that. I tried to keep it somewhat simple this week, okay? And then this one I like too. Uh, that one is the impression of her. Thank you, David. Thank you, Paul. Ray, Michelle, thank you. Dana, thank you. Jan, thank you. Aurora. I think um, it depends on whether you're... So the question is this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Annie O. Michael, thank you. So just let me answer this quick question here, but thank you guys for joining. If you've had enough, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, I'll see you during the week. Thank you, Ileana. Thank you, Organic Paul. You got it, Carol. Phoenix, thank you. Carla. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yep. So listen up. Uh, the question was this. 
if you're drawing a, f it, this is just my philosophy. Another teacher would completely disagree with me. That's cool. I like to put less shadows on a female, more shadows on a guy. So I don't really go anywhere near shadows under the eyes on a female, under the nose on a female. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, that would be great, Nancy. Thank you, sir, my man. Sham, thank you. So less shadows for me on a female on underplanes makes people look older. Uh, more shadows on a guy. I, would, I wouldn't care about a guy. I just kind of put it all down. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy with a B. Vivian, thank you. SF, thank you, Michael. Um, we don't have, I don't know, actually. I see comments are 57, but it's not showing me how many people are watching. Uh, probably not a lot. Probably, I don't know, Michael, to tell you the truth right now. Um, Eliza Yang, thank you. Thank you. Mag you. So this one I like the least, okay? So thanks for joining, guys. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, I look forward to the next live class next Saturday, and I will be posting these live classes, as many as I possibly can, on the website. So have a great day. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Don't forget to click on the bell for notifications if you are new so you can find out when I post new content. I did the correct YouTube thing. Thanks. <laughs>